Hello and welcome to another Procreate tutorial where today I'm going to show you how you can create this linen cloth ghost design. Now as always there's links to everything you're going to need in the requirements section down below including the free texture brush that I've provided and if you want to get access to four more in this collection I'll leave a link to my gum road where you can go ahead and grab the other ones. As always make sure to drop a like on the video, drop a comment down below of what you thought of it and subscribe for weekly tutorials. But if you want even more tutorials from me, I post three more every single month exclusively to my Patreon supporters and the catalog sits at over 80 now. So when you join, you get access to all of them. So be sure to check that out in the link in the description down below. At the end, make sure to tag me in your finished creations over on Instagram. Make sure to tag me so I don't lose them. And with all that said, enjoy the tutorial. So once you've created your canvas and of course you've got the palette for today's design, we're gonna go ahead and go straight up to our layers. We're gonna change our background color. We're gonna grab the one in the bottom right of the palette, slightly off gray. Hit done and then on this empty layer here, we're gonna go ahead and add in our ghost shape. So on this empty layer, we're gonna go to our colors. We're gonna grab this color here, the bottom of the second column from the right. It may blend in with the palette, but it is there. And then if we go up to our actions, we're gonna go ahead and turn on a drawing guide and we're gonna edit the drawing guide and use the option of symmetry. And if I change the color of my line using this little bar up here, you'll be able to see if I set the option to vertical and hit done, then you have this line down the middle and what you do on one side is reflected on the other. Now for a minute, we're just gonna tap on it and turn it off on this layer. So it won't say assisted anymore. We're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to calligraphy. We're gonna use the monoline brush. Now the size is somewhat important a little bit later on, but we're gonna set it to 60% or thereabouts, so 60%. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw in a circle. So draw a circle, link it up, hold your pen so it turns into what it thinks is a perfect circle. But if you tap your finger on the screen, you will get a nice perfect circle. So a little something like this. Then grab your cursor, making sure snapping is turned on and you've got that turned on down here. We can go ahead and move that into that center point of our design, maybe even making it a little bit bigger but making sure you hit that orange line, letting you know you are nice and central. And then we can go ahead and drag the color straight in into it. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers, create a new layer, tap on that layer and add the drawing assist to it. So now it's gonna use the symmetry. So I'm gonna make sure I continue on the curvature. So I'm looking to sort of start here and then just create a bit of a curve outwards. And if yours turns into a line, don't worry. You can simply go ahead and let go go up here and go to editing and then tap on the option of arc. And then we're just gonna make sure that this runs perfectly in. So you can adjust the angle of the arc, making sure it's a little bit sort of less curved outwards, not too sort of steep or anything like that. And that's looking pretty good for a shape. I think I might shorten mine just a tiny bit. I want the ghost to have a little bit of a shorter look. So I'm just gonna bring that up and just adjust that into there so that line runs smooth as you like. And then I can just tap away anywhere and it will get that done. Then we're going to go ahead and create another new layer. And we're just going to create the little ripple at the bottom. And I don't want to use the symmetry option because I want it to be different on both sides. So from this point, what we want to do is you want to create some sort of like wavy line. You don't want to go too mad because that's too many ripples in the material. We want to have roughly around about sort of three or four. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of start over here. Create a lovely sort of ripple and then try and create another one into our final point across the bottom. That's pretty good. We can then use these gaps here, these areas into these points here as where our sort of creases are gonna be. And you can see there, I'm gonna end up with four. It's the bits that dip down that's where we're gonna introduce our creases into with the material. If I undo those lines, we can then go ahead and go to our layers and we can pinch all three together. And then we can go ahead and drag the color into this space here. And that's gonna be the overall shape of your ghost. Let's then add some material to this. But before we do, we'll grab our cursor and we'll just make sure it's in the center of our design, dragging it up, hitting both the horizontal and vertical lines to make sure you're nice and centered. Then let's go to our layer. We're gonna create a new layer above the ghost, tap on it and clipping mask it. We're gonna go to our colors and we're gonna go ahead and grab this color here. It's the third color on that top row. Your brush is gonna be the one that you've installed from my textile collection. If you're interested in the rest of these, I'll leave a link to my gum road and you can grab the other four but we're gonna use the linen texture and the size is gonna be set to 76%. What we're gonna go ahead and do is on this layer, we're gonna cover the whole thing in the texture. That's all we need to do, cover the whole thing, nice even pressure, and you'll end up with this material here. Now at the minute, super flat. So let's go ahead and adjust this. So we're gonna to go to our adjustments. We're gonna to go to the option of liquify. 
we're going to use a couple of different options in here. So we're going to go to the option here and we're going to change it to the option of expand. So what you press, it's going to boost it out. It's going to make it a lot bigger. So if I bring my size up here to roughly around about maybe sort of 60%, on expand and you can see the other settings there so feel free to pause now and match up to that at the top here we're going to go ahead and try and expand it now if i hold down just to show you for demonstration purposes you can see as i hold down it expands it makes it bigger now obviously we've gone too far there so what we're going to go ahead and do is in a circular motion and a little bit more so towards the center we're going to try and expand this area here nice and evenly so it all comes from that sort of center point now we don't want to go too big with it we just want to expand it at the top so that it sort of fits around like a ball almost, like the ghost has like a ball or maybe even a balloon underneath it. So I'm just going to expand and then a tiny bit underneath as well as it just makes its way down. Then we're going to go ahead and change that option there to the option of edge. Now what this is going to do is it's going to pinch the material together. If we drop this down and we drop it down to around about sort of about maybe 25% or thereabouts, as I mentioned, if we imagine a line here that goes to this point here, that's the top. So in the gap, so every bottom bit of these areas here is going to be a crease. So I'm going to introduce a crease that runs from here. I'm just going to run it up there. I'm going to keep going over the top of my line like so. And you can see the material starting to bunch together. And I'm just going to bring that a little bit closer just a few times. Then here in this gap here, I'm going to go ahead and bring the material closer together. I'm going to make this one a little bit wider, as in the area that I'm condensing down. I've started a little bit wider and I'm just letting that run up to the point where it starts to then curve into the rest of the body up here. So I'm just going to bring the material a bit closer together. We'll do the same in here too. So I'm just creating a bit of a curve that goes down towards that bottom point of our little ripple that we created. And then just letting that flick up and curve outwards a little bit towards the top if it makes it that way up or that high up, should I say just so that it can then just run over that top rounded surface. And then we'll do the same over here as well into these little crevices down here. Now, if you wanna redo your line at the bottom, you can do, and you can maybe sort of sharpen up them bottom points. But as long as you can just about see how that texture just curves into some of these points, it will be quite convincing later on. So just go over it. You can always come back to this by the way and just sort of uh, condense it down even further if you need to just to create those ripples. But the shadowing that we're gonna add in a second will make that come to life even more. We're gonna tap on our adjustments when we're done. Now, before we carry on, I'm gonna to go to my layers. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna drag it underneath my ghost. I'm gonna to go to my colors and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab this color here, the top of the fourth column. We're gonna go back to our brush and we're gonna change it back to calligraphy in the one align brush. And we're just gonna create the underside here. So all you need to do is start at this side here and just create almost like another sort of ripple line that runs pretty much through the bottom towards the ends there. And I could maybe sort of just let that roll round and into there. And then if you see any of these little gaps, just go ahead and fill them in for me. Just a little fill in there, a little something like this. And that's the other side that we can't quite see. And then you can go to your layer. You can create a new layer in front of that and tap on it and clipping mask it. We're gonna go back to our colors and we're gonna grab this color here, the top of the third column again. We're going to go back to the texture brush for you again. It'll be under imported unless you've downloaded the full collection. So we've got the linen texture brush and we're just going to run that through there so we can add some texture into it. And then we're going to go ahead and create another new layer, tap on it and clip it to it as well. And using this dark color, we'll just go to our brush. We'll go to airbrushing and the soft brush and we're going to make the brush size probably around about sort of 5%. We'll darken up in this corner here and just sort of blend around and just create little sort of blends like here. I'm just going to blend towards this little opening and then another sort of shadow under here as well. It doesn't have to be anything too intense. Now, before we carry on, I want to add in our light source and that's going to be an orange light on the left and a purple light on the right. Feel free to experiment with different colors, but I thought these two look particularly good in my practices. So I'm going to go to my layers. And I'm going to create a new layer and drag it all the way to the very bottom. Now, at the minute, what we can do is we can go ahead and these layers here that we've created for our ghost so far, so we should have five. If you swipe from left to right on them for me and go to group, we'll have grouped them together and our ghost is nicely in one group. Then the background area, we've created a new layer and we're gonna create another new layer and another new layer. We need three in total. So we'll swipe from left to right on all three, group them together. And feel free to rename these ghost and background if you wish. But we're gonna go to the very bottom layer in this background group 
I'm going to go to our colours and grab the orange here in the top left of the palette. Your brush wants to still be the soft airbrush under airbrushing. And your size wants to be nice and large. We're going to make it pretty big because what we're going to do is I've gone up to around about sort of 55% there in the top left and in a circular motion, trying not to cross that middle line. We're just going to brighten up the top left just a little bit, nice and subtle. We don't want to go too crazy with the lighting. But the orange one is primarily our sort of main light source. Then we're going to go to our colours and we're going to grab the purple in the top, uh, the bottom of the first column. We're going to go to our layers and go to the next layer up and we're going to position this one in the top right, but not quite as large as the other one. So you can just let this purple sort of almost be like a background light. It's just going to be up here. I'm going to brighten up the corner a little bit, but the orange one is a little bit closer to us. If you imagine this one's sort of round the back of the ghost and this one's a little bit round towards the front. And to do that, we're also going to make this one a little bit brighter by going to our layers and going to the last one. Go to your blend mode and change the layer blend mode on this one to add. And go to your colours and grab the yellow in the middle of that first column. And with a brush size that's slightly smaller this time, maybe around about sort of 30%, I'm going to brighten up this top left corner a little bit. Circular motion pressure, super, super light. But you can brighten up that corner until you end up with this lovely glow up here. That way we've got a nice bright orange light source. Now let's add some lighting to our ghost. So we're going to go ahead and collapse that group down for the background, go back into our ghost group. And where we've got the texture that's clipped to our ghost, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab this color here. We're going to get started with our shadow. So it's the top of the third column. Your brush wants to still be the soft airbrush. Size is going to probably want to be a bit smaller now. I've gone down to around about 5%. Now each one of these sort of waves, where it dips down, that's where we can add our shadows. So at the peaks here, just like a mountain as such, where the peak here is, the bit on the left is facing the orange, so it's gonna get some orange in a minute. And then where it faces the right over here, it's gonna get a little bit of purple. But in the gap where we made our lovely little creases, we can add in some shadows. So I've just dropped mine down to 3% because I've got a very small gap here, a little crease in here. Very, very lightly, I'm starting at the bottom and then just running up those lines that I can see that I made in my um, edge liquify effects. Now we want to keep this nice and smooth, nothing too sort of bloppy or blodgy, whatever word you want to use. I ended up adding like a large blob of black in there. And we may, want to make sure we're right on that crease line and just letting that run up nice and smooth. Just keep it nice and light to start with. Then this big gap here, I'm going to go ahead and make the brush size a bit bigger now, about sort of 5%. I can see my crease line that I made. I'm just going to go ahead and just sort of darken up. And it doesn't matter if you can't see the crease. Essentially, all you're trying to do is where your bottom of your sort of little waves are there, you can add in a little bit of darkness in there and then fade that up as it makes its way up towards the top area of the ghost and then blend it out to the left, blend it out to the right. So it blends out towards your next peak. So you can see here, I've got quite a large little sort of drop here in our waves. So I'm gonna end up with a slightly larger shadow. Again, I'm gonna leave that for a moment so I can move on to the next one because I wanna make sure that my shadows are gonna be nice and sort of uh, quite even in terms of their distribution of the shadowy color. So, you know, the actual darkness. I don't want it to be too intense in one space early doors. I wanna just be in control of it. You know, something like this. And then I've got another one here, but this one's a smaller one again. So I'm gonna drop the 3% brush size get in there on that crease line that I made and start to just darken up down into that little wave at the bottom there and then push up. So again, that's all you're looking for. I'm gonna undo that because I ended up with a little bit of a blob there or a blotch or whatever we're calling it. Then I'm gonna zoom out. You should already be able to see these lovely little ripples. And then from there, I'm gonna make my brush size a bit smaller again, just another 3%. I'm gonna get in here and quite be quite uh, sort of bold with adding in some shadows in some of these creases where I think necessary. So I can just get towards the center point of all of those shadows and just add in a little bit of extra darkness in certain areas like there, that extra little darker patch, you see that there in the shadow space. I'm gonna do the same in here as well. Lovely little sort of shadow, nice bold one. And then I'm gonna add in another one over here too. Again, we can always come back to these later on. And then I'm gonna just, Grab a 4% brush size and for my larger ones, I'm just going to sort of blend out those shadows a bit more in towards these lovely big peaks because I've got one right in the middle here, which actually works out quite nicely. 
So let's then go ahead and go to our layers and create another new layer. I want to do this on a separate layer. So if we go ahead and tap on this and clipping mask it, while we're doing some shadows, we're just going to zoom out of our ghost a little bit. We're going to go ahead with a 10% brush size pretty much, just if not slightly larger, maybe around about sort of 15. I'm just going to go ahead and just darken up the, the right side just a tiny bit in a nice curved fashion. Just a very, very light shadow on here, just to add a little bit more color. And talking of color, let's add in our lighting. So we're going to go ahead and go to our layers and create another new layer. Tap on it and clip it to the ghost body. It's always going to be clipped to this ghost body here. And this layer, we're going to go ahead and go to our colors and grab the orange in the top left of the palette. Now I need you to be really gentle with this bit. We're just going to add in a normal layer blend mode of orange to this. So around about sort of 20%. If not slightly smaller, about sort of 17, just going to very lightly just add in a little bit of orange in this top left area and then down the edge as well. And again, a bit of a curve to it will be lovely. So it matches the curvature of that sort of balloon shape at the top. Then what we're going to do is get serious with our highlights and shadows. We're going to create another new layer. We're going to tap on it and clipping mask it again and change the blend mode from normal to add. If we then go ahead and we reduce our brush size down to about sort of five or four percent, same color, we're going to go ahead and add in our highlights. Now, because this lighting's coming across, we don't want to add in a highlight that's all the way across, super bright, all the way to the right hand side. We don't want that. By the way, look how cool those colors look already. What we want is them to be sort of quite bright. And then as they gradually get further around the object, they start to completely sort of blend out. So you know, that's just an example for you, bright across all the way through to the lighter tones, because eventually we'll add purple in the opposite way from right to left on those peaks as well. So let's get involved with our highlights. So let's go ahead and again with a 4% brush size, what we're now looking for is these peaks. We're looking for the peaks in our little waves. So the left side of the peak. So imagine that there is a line that goes up this peak and goes all the way up. That separates the right hand side of the peak to the left hand side and I want you to add in highlights in this space here. So if I was to do that again, this middle one here, we draw a line and we're going to add in highlights in this area here. We don't want to cross over that point because that's where the cloth is sort of facing away from our light source. So let's go back in with that four or five percent brush size and we're going to very lightly start off by adding in a lovely little bit of orange that runs up this beautiful sort of wave shape all the way up towards the top of the body there. And then we'll do the same on the actual edge as well. Make it nice and bright and let that run up. Now we're gonna do some more lighting up here in a moment. We're just gonna do the waves down here for a second. And that's looking pretty good to me. Then I've got a dip and then I've got another peak. So again, we're gonna do the left side of this peak. So you may wanna increase your brush size if it's a large one, like I've got a large sort of peak here on the end. I'm going to create that lovely bit of orange, runs up towards the center, and then it needs to blend out at the top. By the way, if you press a little bit too firm up here, let's hypothetically say you drew something like this, it's a bit too bold. Just grab your eraser, tap on it, and use the soft airbrush. And with a large brush size, just sort of go round in a circle like this and just fade it out. I'm going to go back so I'm in full control, and I can just bring that lovely highlight up blend it out. I'm going to just expand on this one a little bit too over here. Now as we get further over here we still want to introduce orange because it's slightly sort of facing us. Um, again it's facing the object a little bit more as we sort of discussed early doors. So we can do this and we can brighten this up. We can always come back and lower it down. But look how cool that lighting looks already. Let's then increase the brush size up to maybe around about sort of 15% and just brighten up the top left edge here. So we're going round in that circular motion just as we did before. You want to keep it nice and light as you get towards the center and then maybe press a little bit firmer on the left if you really want to sort of bulk out the orange color there. And then we can go back in with a sort of larger brush size that we did before about 7% and very lightly just fade out the color again. So I'm really light with my pressure now and I'm kind of just expanding the orange a little bit. So its coverage is a little bit larger. Now we're going to leave that as is. We're not going to go too mad with it just yet. We'll create a new layer and we'll tap on it and clipping mask it too. And again, change the blend mode from normal to add. We're then going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to grab the or uh, the purple, sorry, at the bottom of that first column. And we're going to do the same, but on the opposite side. So we're going to make sure this is a little bit smaller in terms of coverage. We don't want the, the purple to come in quite as much as the 
orange here. So my brush size is set to about 11%. I'm gonna go around this top edge here, bring that round, blend it in towards our beautiful orange, and it's a little bit on that edge, and then bring that down here like so. And then you can brighten up down here on the sort of flick outwards a little bit more. Again, another light source coming across. And then if we make our brush size probably around about sort of three or four percent, if not smaller, we just want to go ahead and look at our peaks now and do the right side of them. So you may cross over your um, purple and orange a little bit, and that's fine. You'll just end up sort of blending the colors, but you're kind of looking for the right side of your peaks and then just let in that purple just like the opposite side just run up and then here in the middle with a five percent brush size i'm going to go ahead and just introduce that little bit of purple in here keeping it nice and quite light because again i want the i want the orange to be the dominant color therefore i'm only going to add in the lightest of strokes here very 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 light there just the lightest of strokes i want this area over here to be more predominantly purple I can bring that color around a little bit, create a bit of a flick inwards. And there we go, we've added in our dual lighting. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another new layer. Tap on it, clipping mask it, and change the blend mode from normal and change it again to add. Now, we'll continue with the purple for a minute. We're gonna bring the brush size down to about 2%. And what we'll do is, just on here, again, looking at our peaks on the right-hand side of the peak, just on the edge of the material, I'm gonna brighten that up. And I'm gonna brighten it up again here. Just these small little details and we'll leave it exactly like that. If we switch our color to the orange, top of the first column, we'll do the same on the peaks again, but on the opposite side. So we're gonna go ahead and brighten up the edge of the material here, brighten up the edge of the material here, and you can let that just run a little bit close to your shadows. And another little bit of brighter edge. It's just like a little edge lighting, or something like that. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to our layers and we're going to get started with adding in our buttons. So we're going to collapse our group down for our ghost. We're going to go ahead and go to our colors and we're going to grab this color here, top of the third column again. We're going to go to our layers and create another new layer and we'll create another new layer. And we'll start from left to right on both and group them together. So this group at the top here is going to be your button and then you've got your ghost and your background. Now on the top layer in this new group that we created, we're gonna go back to our brush and change it back to calligraphy and the monoline brush. 60 sort of percent is bang on what we need. And we're gonna take a look at this space. We're gonna draw in a circle, hold your pen down and then pop your finger on the screen as well to make sure it's a nice perfect circle. And something for size like this is good. It's arguably better to be slightly larger so you can scale it down afterwards. Then we're gonna go ahead and go to our layers. We're gonna tap on that layer we just drew on and tap on reference, which now every layer looks at that layer as a guide. So if we go to the one underneath and we were to drag that color into the middle, it's used the layer above, of course, as a reference, and now it's filled the center in. We can go back up to that ring and tap on it and turn off the reference. It's important you turn that off, otherwise every layer looks at this one as a guide. Now for a moment, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that middle circle that's filled in, and we're gonna tap on it, and just bring that opacity down temporarily until we can just see the edge of that top ring, because we're gonna work on that first. So we're gonna create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it to the ring. We're gonna to go to our colors and we're gonna grab the top of the second column. Your brush wants to go back to the option of airbrushing and the soft brush. And we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna add in some lighting. Now my brush size is currently set to around about 2%, which looks pretty good. Now, just as an idea for you, we're gonna go ahead and brighten up this top edge here, the inside edge here. And we're gonna do that, but really, really lightly. We wanna be in full control of the lighting and we're doing this white layer first to show sort of the shape of the button first of all. So we're brightening up this top left corner and then we let that sort of fade out as it gets round towards these edges. And then we're gonna go ahead and start off really narrow. You can see where my brush head starts. It actually starts inside the shape. And then as I make my way round and wanna add more of the white, I bring it into the shape a bit more. And then again, let it go in towards the middle. It's a little something like this. And then we can also, on the inside edge of this top, just add in a tiny little sort of bit of lighting on the inside here in a kind of similar fashion. It's just a very thin bit of lighting. Then we'll go to our layers. We'll turn the opacity back up of that inside area, bring it up to max, and yours should then look like this. What we can then do is go to our inside area, create a new layer and tap on it and clipping mask it to it. 
we're going to make our brush size a little bit bigger, maybe around about three or four percent. And again, we're going to create a bit of a curve here. So this is for real this time. And also a little bit of a very, very light bit of color here. You should end up with a little something like this. Then we're going to go to our eraser, tap on it and make sure it is that soft brush under airbrushing. And your brush size is set to around about sort of three percent. We're just going to add in a shadow here by erasing a little bit of that highlight. So I'm just erasing in that little sort of area here where the lighting is not going to quite reach. So I'm just, you can see that little bit of a shadow here in this top corner, and then we get into that button area in the center. Let's then add the holes as well. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer in this group at the top. For a moment, we'll continue with this white color just so we can see it against the actual button background. But our brush wants to go back to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush, the same size as you had before, which is 60%. Just create a dot. Then we'll go to that layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it, grab your cursor and move that across until you end up with like a nice little gap in between. Then go to your layers, pinch them two together, swipe to the left and duplicate them, and then grab your cursor and move it down until you end up with an even gap between here and here. Or thereabouts and if you've got snapping turned on still if you see these three lines it lets you know you've moved perfectly down from the original so if i tap on my cursor now they are nice and nice and neat and nice and organized if we pinch those two together again onto one layer we now have our buttons then what we're going to do is grab our cursor and we're going to move it into the center of the circle and you should get these three blue lines here which let you know that those three dots are in the center of the circle shape that it can see underneath if we then go to our layers and create another new layer and drag it underneath our four dots, tap on it and turn off the clipping mask if it does. Using the same nice highlight color we've been using, we're gonna go back to our brush and go back to airbrushing and the soft brush. You're gonna need a very, very small brush size here, maybe around about 1%. And all I want you to do is sort of brighten up this edge here. So if I press quite firm for you, in fact, I'll do it in orange just for sort of demonstration purposes. That's the highlight I want you to add with that light color. So if we go back to the light color top of the second column, we're just going to go ahead and just brighten up in here. It's nothing too sort of detailed and we do the same. So it's that bottom right sort of corner. I know a circle doesn't have a corner, but it's that bottom right edge. And we'll just brighten up in there. And that's just like the indentation of the button. Then we can go to that layer here for our four buttons. We can go to our colors. We can go ahead and we can grab the top color here in that third column and drag the color into those dots. Now what we're going to do is just add some highlights to here. So we're going to go ahead and we want to add some highlight to that top edge. So here where we've got the ring, we're going to go ahead and create a new layer, tap on it and clipping mask it. We're going to go ahead and change the blend mode from normal and change it to add. And we're going to add in the lovely orange color here in the top left of the palette. Soft airbrush again, around about sort of two or three percent will do the trick. And we're going to just go round that top left edge, brightening it up, adding in some lovely orange from our light source. And you can get a little bit sort of bold with the amount of color that you add. We're then also going to go ahead and add some on the inside down here, just so we know that the lighting is coming from that light source, of course. Make sure it's lovely and sort of matches the rest of the scene. Make that a little bit brighter up on that edge there. And in fact, we could probably blow them out a little bit more. And then that one matches that side. But we are going to duplicate the eye in a minute, flip it over and save yourself some time. Before we carry on, the only adjustments I want to make is we have the nice sort of inset area there of the kind of light source and gray. I'm going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. I want to make it a little bit more gray. And I'll bring that next one down to about 70% and then merge them together. So that was just a personal preference. But what we're then going to do is above our four dots, we're going to create a new layer. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to grab this light gray at the top of the fourth column. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go into the option of inking and we're going to use the ink bleed brush. And our brush is set to about 12%. And we're going to add in a crisscross where the little bit of string there attaches the eye to the body. And another adjustment I want to make before we carry on is this layer here that's clipped to that ring again. We're going to go back to our colors. We're going to grab that top column, top of the second column. We're going to go back to our brush and airbrushing and that soft brush. Again, small brush size is good, around about sort of three or two percent. 
I'm just going to go around this bottom edge here, just adding in a little bit of a sort of uh, a reverb kind of lighting that's coming around this edge here. So just a little bit more color on there, and I'm probably going to brighten this up a little bit more as well, just to increase the brightness of the button. So make it less of a uh, sort of dark color and a little bit more of a gray. But that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy to move on. So as I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and save ourselves some time. So we're going to go to our group for the eye. At this point, you are going to need to swipe the group to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and flip it horizontally and move it across to the right. Make sure you hit those three lines there. You see those three blue lines and the orange line in the middle. What that lets me know is the left edge of this box is touching that center line. And we also have moved it perfectly to the right. And then we can tap on our cursor when we're done. We can go to our group for that right side and we can go to the orange highlight layer. If we tap on it and we alpha lock it, so we can't paint outside of it. If we go back to our layers and we go to the purple at the bottom of the first column, then go back to that layer, tap on it and fill it with the purple. If I tap away now, you can see that the lighting has now changed to reflect the purple that's coming in from that right side. Now what we're gonna do is, if you're happy with your eyes, you've got two options. You can tap on it and flatten them down and save yourself some layers or you can swipe from left to right on both and group them together so your eyes are all in one group together. I'm going to grab my cursor and just triple check that they are in the center of my uh, little sort of puppet here so I'm going to move them down a little bit. I want them somewhat in the middle of that circle so where we drew that initial circle you see that curve on the right I want them to kind of run through that point. I'm going to tap on my cursor when I'm done. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our layers and create a new layer and put it underneath this group of our eyes. And we're gonna add some shadows. We're gonna tap on this layer and we're gonna to go to the drawing assist and turn it on. So it's using that symmetry line that we added in earlier on. If we go to our colors and we grab this dark tone here in the middle, it's pretty, well it is black, it's the middle of that second column. Our brush is gonna be set to the soft brush still under airbrushing, probably around about 5% brush size will be pretty good. We're gonna darken up the bottom right corner, keep it nice and light. And you can see I'm also going to run a little bit to the left, but we're just going to slowly but surely just build up a shadow. And more so right underneath the button will look fantastic, but just sort of darkening up underneath the button, blending that shadow a tiny bit more until you end up with this lovely bit of sort of elevation of the button on top of the material. So a little something like this. And you could probably get away with just darkening that up a tiny bit more. And again, what you do on one side is being reflected on the other. And now we've got this beautiful bit of 3D effect. Now what we wanna go ahead and do is add in a new mouth at the bottom. And all that's gonna be is kind of a tug in the material that's gonna sort of stretch out the material. So to do that, we need to go up to our layers. We can collapse, well, we need to go into our group, should I say, for our ghost. And we're gonna to go to the material here that's attached to it. Make sure you're on that layer. We're gonna to go to our adjustments and we're gonna to go to the option of liquify. We're going to make sure we're using the option of edge and our brush size is set to around about sort of the 26% mark. You can go bigger or smaller, it's totally up to you how big of a mouth you want to make for it. So if you make it a little bit smaller, maybe around about sort of 22%, that's not too bad either. That's probably the smallest you could go. Then what you need to do is just simply draw a line horizontally, keep going backwards and forwards, and the material will bring itself together, just like we did at the bottom. I'm just going to go left to right, left to right. You can see the material starting to stretch. And then as you sort of make your way around to the edge, you can curve that up a little bit if you like, and curve it up at the ends to create a little bit more of that, a little bit of a smile, but ultimately you wanna kind of bring the material together a little bit like this, and just create that really kind of creepy look. You can make the brush eyes again a little bit bigger if you want, and bring in more material, it's totally up to you. But you can, I've gone back over there with a 28%, and it's really sort of stretched the material, created a much bigger mouth in here. So you end up creating a little something like this. Then we can go ahead and make the brush eyes a little bit smaller, maybe around about 20%. And you can create like a little defect up here, for example. We can just keep going backwards and forwards and create a little bit of a line and a stretch in the material as if there is another sort of defect up there. It's just a little bit of a worn, you know, mysterious, creepy creature. Now, what we can then go ahead and do is we can take a look at our creases as well while we're here. You can make the brush eyes a little bit bigger around about sort of the 30% mark. And you can just take a look and see if you just wanna sort of make those creases a little bit, little bit more uh, prominent. So you can run up and down your shadows because now you've done your shadows, you know exactly where your creases are. That's just in case you need to. 
And then if we go back to our layer, what we're going to do is we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And it's going to give it even more contrast and it's going to make it even more sort of a bit more of a worn look to it. I really love how this turns out when you do this. Then what we can do is we can add a little bit of a shadow on the floor to make sure it's nice and floating. So we can go ahead and create a new layer. Once you've collapsed that group down, just drag it towards the bottom. But in front of your little background group of colors here, go to your colors and make sure you're using the middle color in that second column. With your soft airbrush, make your brush size around about sort of 20% and tap in the middle of the screen, quite firm, and tap on your cursor when you're done. And you can just flatten this circle down. You can't really see it, but if you then bring it into view here, you can make it as somewhat as wide as the ghost and you can position that either with a bit of a gap. So it maybe has that floating effect or maybe really close. It's totally up to you, neither is wrong. As long as you're in that center point, you'll then just about be able to see a little bit of a shadow underneath your ghost. Now at this point, I would always keep in my final adjustments, of course. And the only thing I think I would do would be increase the sort of uh, density and dark area of the shadows in the ripples. So if I was to, for example, go to my ghost layer and I can see the shadows I've got here. If I was to swipe them to the left and duplicate them, you end up with a much more sort of dynamic, quite strong shadow set down there, but I think it's a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blend mode of it. I'm gonna change it to the option of overlay and just bring that down a tiny bit, down to about sort of 50% and then turn it on and off just so I can see the difference. And we do end up with a little bit more of a darker shadow in those and then they kind of stand out a little bit more. If we zoom in for the little video on Instagram and go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and you enjoyed the free texture brush. Again, if you want to get the other ones, there's a denim one and so on. There's a link in the description down below to my gum road where you can grab four extra ones if you want to. So as always, you can drop a like on the video. Let me know in the comments what you thought of it. I check all the comments and I reply to pretty much every single one. So I'll be there and I'll be waiting. And if you didn't already know, I post weekly tutorials here on my YouTube channel. But if you want even more tutorials from me, you can go ahead and follow me over on Patreon. There's a link in the description down below where I post exclusive tutorials every single month to my Patreon supporters, as well as you can have your name featured in videos, early access to tutorials and much, much more. So hit the link in the description down below and come and share your support. And if you like this video here on YouTube, you'll probably like this one on the screen now, another Halloween-ish themed one for you. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.